The other day I was playing badminton with my wife and, and she's very good at badminton, I'll tell you that. And uh, I'm not too bad, but you know, she'll make me run, you know, laugh and write. And you know, we play well together. But just the other day I was thinking about the church and, and, and things about matters that I need to look into, also about the sermon that I'll preach and all that. And as I was playing with her, I noticed that my performance was dropping. I was not present. I was not in the now. And it affected my performance. I know it's a small thing, but you know, in all the affairs of life, by the way, I, I got myself back and said, I'm going to enjoy this moment with my wife playing this game. I won't think about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. I'm going to enjoy this time with her. And it, my performance improved. Jesus said, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Message Bible I love this one. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. <laughs> I love it. Do you see that? Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. Don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. So you say, well, I need to worry about the future because I need to be prepared. You know, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. I need to be prepared. You know, but friend, your mentality is out of fear because, you know, you're saying, unless I prepare myself, I'll fail when the time comes. Not, not if you're worried. You can plan without worry, okay? I'm not talking about plan, planning things that are legitimate, okay? I'm talking about things that you are just projecting, you know, trying to over-prepare yourself, overthinking the future, then you are worried about the future. But you need to know this, that when the future comes, there'll be grace for your future. God will always give grace for your rest. God will give you grace. Just like Israel, God gave them manna every day. And, and they can't keep manna to the next day. It spoils. Manna will spoil. They must eat the manna for the day. Next day, they must trust God for fresh manna. And the next day, they'll trust God for fresh manna. However, on the sixth day, before the day of rest, on the seventh day is their day of rest, their Sabbath, God gives them double manna. Why? Because God wants them to have confidence that they can rest. The supply is there. God wants them so much to rest. Now, back then it was physical rest. Now for you, it may involve physical rest, for some of you, but basically in essence, what I'm saying about and sharing about is resting on the inside. Resting on the inside. Amen? Where you live in the now. When you find that you live in the now, your mind become, becomes mentally sound. Amen? What the psychiatrist will call a person who is whole, integrated. Amen? You find all the kinks in your personality starts, you know, dissipating. And you find that wholeness comes in mentally and then even physically. Because many of it is caused by stress. Many of it is caused by disease. It's caused by dis ease, when you're not at ease. Amen. So live in the now. Praise the Lord. And I want to finish off by just looking at the entire uh, passage before this. Jesus says, If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think He'll attend to you? Take pride in you. Do His best for you. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. To not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. Now that's grace. Grace is God giving. Grace is God supply. So you can respond to God's supply. Amen. People who don't know God and the way He works fast over these things, but you know both God and how He works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing what? When? Right now. What God is doing right now. In your relationship, when you're talking to your spouse, pay attention to what God is doing right now. Maybe it's coming through your spouse's mouth. Amen? Maybe God wants you to pay attention on something that's happening right now. So you just be now and you find that all the help you need in that relationship will be there. All the favor you need in that relationship will be there. Amen? Not just in relation, any area of your life, be present, be in the now. You'll find that uh, even in sports, they'll say things like this. 
that guy was in the flow yesterday. You know, usually when he plays, he's not like that. He's in the flow. They call it flow. But before that, there was a time, a few uh, decades ago, they'll call it um, in the zone. You know, in the zone. Now they call it in the flow. In the flow. Uh, 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 that, that guy is in flow. But in the zone. It used to be in the, in the zone. But before he was in the zone, do you know what they call it? Literally. Many years ago, they call it a state of grace. A state of grace. Literally a state of grace. Child of God, you are not under law. That's why sin has no dominion over you. You're not under law, under you, you performing, under, under, under you working for God, all right? But you're under grace. God is working for you. It's a flow, amen? And the only way to get out of grace is to try to put in effort. When you put in effort, you frustrate the grace of God. The grace of God is for you to have, God is supplying me right now, Law is, is uh, demand-oriented, right? Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. And uh, we are trying our best not to, okay? And, and the more we try not to, the more we fall into sin because the strength of sin is the law. But here, uh, grace is actually supply-minded. Supply. God is supplying. God is working in my life. God is working in me right now. God is working through me right now. And God is working for me. And I participate in it. Amen. Even my prayer is to see the flow of what the Spirit of God is doing. And I participate in that, in that, in that flow. Hallelujah. So you're under grace. A state of grace. Hallelujah. Perpetually. Always you're under the state of grace. What? Like in sports, whether it's tennis or whatever it is. Uh, you know, you'll find that a, a guy who is seasoned, he has won all the uh, uh, slams and uh, finally, you know, the final one and he cannot make it. Why? Usually it's because of pressure. He wants so much to win that particular one that he becomes, he overthinks it. He, uh, he steps out of the zone, okay, out of the flow and uh, loses the game. It applies to every area of your life, whether you, are, you, you have a, a big presentation this coming week, or even like uh, you need to uh, talk to someone, some things that are a bit sensitive to talk about, right? If you overthink it, if you try to labor over it so much, you'll find that you step out of the state of grace. You step out of the flow. You step out of the zone. We enjoy what you're doing. It's the flow. Amen. And the Bible says God has given us richly all things to enjoy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you operate in a sense of fullness. Amen. Before you step into a presentation or uh, you're doing marketing or, or you're trying to uh, sell, sell something in your line of work and all that, if you're anxious for the result, usually you end up with nothing. Okay? But you're not anxious for the result. The results are there. The anointing is a flow. Right? That's why the anointing is represented by the oil in the Old Testament. Oil gives you flow. When you touch oil, it's a flow. Right? The door is creaking. What do you do? You anoint the hinges with oil. And what happened? Now it's a flow. Amen. We, we grunt. We make a lot of noise. We put in a lot of effort. Why? There's no oil. Amen. When there's oil, things become flowing. Praise God. Amen. I don't want to hear a dry preacher. I want to hear an oily preacher. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't worry about, about the future. Don't even postpone your enjoyment today, your happiness today, your, your, your joy today for a future event. Enjoy it now. I'm saying His blood is so beautiful, so powerful. So we're just pleading the blood of Jesus on your room and on your family, believing for a great outpouring in your place today. Amen. Come on, let's just sing this. Let's sing about the blood of Jesus. Making all things new, your blood speaks a better word. Yes, it does. Your blood, the measure of my worth, your blood, more than I deserve.
speaks better words over us. We thank you, Lord, your word of life. It's rewriting everything of our past. Thank you for that precious blood. Sing it out. It's rewriting my history. It covers me with destiny. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ. It's rewriting my history. It covers me with Precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history yeah. It covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny Hi, I hope you were blessed and encouraged by this video. If you were impacted by this message, let us know by liking it and leaving a comment below. Lastly, feel free to subscribe to get more inspirational content every week. See you again real soon. God bless you.